So we're using the, the what's called the, the Yamanaka factors. Uh -huh. And so the first uh, person to do this. Sure. Well, the, the, the first person to use these factors was uh, Shinya Yamanaka, a Japanese scientist who looked through a lot of different genes and found a set of four factors that if you put them into an adult cell, say skin cell, they would go back to being very primitive. So primitive, what we call a, a pluripotent stem cell, that you could then turn those cells into a nerve cell or even regrow an eye in the dish. It was a, a breakthrough that led to the Nobel Prize being awarded to him in 2012. You just take a person's skin cell and turn it into a neuron. I mean, that, Why that's not? Like amazing. We do, I mean, a, a high school student can do that these days. It's not that difficult. Right. Once, typically with science, once you know how something works, it's pretty easy. Same with aging, I think. Uh, but what we've discovered is that, um, and first of all, I want to give a lot of credit to someone at the Sulk whose uh, name is Juan Colas Belmonte, a professor yeah. there. A uh, good friend of mine, and, he's, uh, and he did the experiment that we were trying to do. Uh, so we were just slightly scooped on that. But he made a mouse where he could turn on these four Yamanaka genes. Uh, and the, for short, they stand for O, S, K, uh, and M. And that mouse, uh, when he switched them on, died within a couple of days. So that's not great for those mice. But what he then cleverly did was he didn't give up, or his, his postdoc didn't give up. What he did was he turned the genes on for a couple of days and then stopped, let the mice recover for a few days, and then turned them back on. And so the, you know, I feel for the mice because they were headed towards death and they could recover and then they cycled, but actually they ended up being healthier. The premature aging mouse model that he had uh, lived, I think it was 40 plus percent longer. But also he's shown since then that you can use these factors to, Im to improve wound healing and kidney healing. So was he boosting their stem cell pools and their, what? Was, so he was like regenerating what, tissue? What I think or? he's doing is what we're doing in the lab, which is getting those proteins that have moved around and lost their way to go back to where they were when they were young and then reset the methylation clock. And now a cell doesn't just think it's was young. Was he using CRISPR to do it's this? It's literally young. No, he, well, he might have, but he it was a transgenic mouse, which means he inserted those four genes into the mouse's genome yeah. with an on-off switch. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we don't do that. We, we use uh, viruses that we can give to old mice. He has to start from a, a single egg. Yeah. We can go into old mice and within a few weeks figure out if we've reversed aging in a tissue or in the whole mouse. And uh, we've also discovered that it's best if you don't use all four of those factors. We have to leave one of those off because it's toxic. Um, it's the MYC gene. MYC is an mm -hmm. oncogene. But the other three work great. And the results that came in through uh, the tech today use those three genes to protect neurons from dying uh, in the mouse, but also in the dish. And that the gene that r can restore the, um, the Horvath clock was required. And so we're very close, I think, to, to seeing the future of where um, maybe eventually we don't use viruses. Maybe we, we have molecules that can do this, that we can put in a drip or in a pill that can send us back another 20 years. That's super exciting. I'm, I'm like very pumped up about this whole epigenetic clock research and, and linking it to, you know, basically like how, being able to reverse, reverse aging. I mean, I think that, do you know, um, is there any evidence that fasting has any effect on that epigenetic clock? Has that been shown, do you know? Uh, I have not seen that. Um, I think it, what I've seen from Steve's work and others is that you can slow the rate of the clock, but I haven't seen reversal reverse. yet. Um, and I, I've shown Steve the results I just told you, and he's pretty excited that someone's figured out, or we, th we think we've figured out, why the clock ages, what's causing it, but also what's the first reset that's ever been found. But I, I would suspect that fasting can help, but probably it's not enough to really do what these powerful genes are doing. Right. One, one day we'll, we'll figure it out. But So fasting, I still do that as much as I can for one main reason, and that is that it's going to activate these defenses that at least slow down and somewhat um, stabilize the epigenome decay that we call. Uh, and, but we're probably going to need something more potent to really go back 20 years. But do we, do we slow down aging uh, by fasting and, and running? Uh, absolutely, no question. 